Welcome to Discover Me podcast. We bring you amazing people doing remarkable things in a very influential way. I'm Brian. And I'm Lavanna. And today we have with us Lativia Herlong, a wife, a mother, and a nurse practitioner. Welcome, Lativia. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we'll jump right into it. So we always, we like to ask, um, can you tell us a little bit about who Lativia Herlong is? Sure. So I'm going to get her along. I am a family nurse practitioner. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. Um, I am a um, National Health Service Corp loan repayment recipient. And I'm also a student, uh, doctoral student at the University of Alabama here in um, Birmingham um, with a subspecialty in nurse education. Okay. So uh, it's new to me. What what's the you said you're a recipient of uh I don't even want to butcher it. <laughs> what what's the you're a recipient of what and what is it again? What does it mean? It's it's called the National Health Service Corps. Okay. Um, it is a uh, federal program that provides funding to healthcare professionals um, to improve access of care in underserved areas. So do you currently um, provide health care in an underserved area? I do. So I have been working at Rural Health Medical Program. Um, the central location is um, in the Black Belt of Alabama in Selma, Alabama. Um, I work at a clinic in Marion um, that is 30 minutes outside, but it's still along the Black Belt um, of Alabama. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what is, t tell us about a nurse practitioner. What, what is a nurse practitioner and, and what do you do? So a nurse practitioner is a healthcare professional that provides primary care services, preventative services, um, disease management of chronic conditions um, that can range from seeing um, children um, from birth all the way through the lifespan um, to the geriatric population, depending on um, the specialty. Okay, so I kind of want to bag it up a little bit and like, I know a lot of nurses, um, but I don't know a lot of nurse practitioners. How did you get to the point of being a, a nurse practitioner? So let me tell you a little bit about my long journey um, in yeah. healthcare. So <laughs> I started off as um, a patient care assistant um, at Brookwood a Hospital in Birmingham. And I knew then that um, I wanted to be a nurse, but I really didn't. I started off at um, the University of Alabama at Birmingham, but I wasn't uh, really prepared for college um, because for one, I didn't have the resources or really know how to transition from high school to college. So um, I started at UAB and I went for a couple of semesters and I got to the point where it was trying to fend for myself and provide for myself on my own or go to school full time. So what I did was um, I decided to move back home until I was able to uh, fend for myself basically. And I was introduced into um, a community college um, that eventually led to me uh, transitioning to a private college in Birmingham to get my um, diploma in practical nursing. So during my time um, obtaining my diploma for practical nursing, I worked at Brookwood as a nursing assistant. And it was then when I was just like, oh my gosh, um, you know, working with nurses, it was both uh, LPNs and RNs. I knew that this was something that I wanted to do. I just wanted to take care of people. So um, as I work as a nursing assistant, at Brookwood and I went to school um, a little bit over a year and I obtained my um, diploma in practical nursing. 
Um, so that is a basically a short-term program that you are licensed to practice as a nurse. Um, but it wasn't until um, I became an RN where I learned the difference. So uh, LPN can do the majority of what an RN can do. It's only certain things like when it comes to education and taking orders from a physician um, and certain other things um, dealing, dealing with caring for patients that um, the LPN is not able to do. So when I became an LPN, I started off working at a nursing home, um, which transitioned to um, assisted living uh, with a specialty care unit. Um, then I was like, Lord, this is not it. Um, I, I wanted more, I wanted to do more, I wanted to learn more. So I ended up um, going back to school and um, for, to be a registered nurse and I attained my associate's degree also at a, um, a private college. Um, one thing about this private college is that sometimes what I found for myself is that everybody's journey is different. And some people don't have the opportunity to go to a, a big time university. Um, but what I have found is that um, you take your journey and the way that um, God has a plan for everyone and the way that society has deemed it to be is not necessarily the, the right way or considered the best way. Um, so going back to um, um, after I became a registered nurse, um, I still, I was like, okay, Lord, this is not it. So I started off at, um, a rehab hospital in um, Birmingham um, when I became a registered nurse. And um, I also kind of um, experienced acute care setting side um, in the ICU, um, uh, med surge, and long-term acute care. So I kind of experienced different areas of caring for patients. Um, along my journey as an RN. And it wasn't until I think I was in long term acute care where I was just like, Lord, you know, I'm still not feeling complete. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized I noticed um, a lot of my patients, um, they were addressing me as doctor. And I was just like, Lord, I don't know how they are um, calling me a doctor. You know, <laughs> is it something that yeah. they see that I'm not seeing in myself? So um, throughout my journey, I I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not feeling like, you know, I'm where I should be. So I began researching and um, I knew that I wanted to go back to school but I didn't know what I wanted to be really. Um, so throughout my experience, um, I found that I, I was taking care of patients from the back end. Um, so I told you about uh, my experience with acute care to long-term acute care. That's for patients who are still in critical condition, but not um, ready to be on a unit at a floor, or it's gonna um, take a longer time to um, be on the, in the acute care unit, but you know, they can't, you can't kind of use up ICU beds. So they kind of place those patients in long-term acute care. Um, I've been on the med surge floor with managing patients um, and um, rehab. Um, a lot of my patients in rehab, that was my, the majority of my experience, was caring for patients who've had brain injury, strokes, heart attacks, after the fact, rehabbing them back to um, being able to go back to their home in the community, uh, being able to function. So through this experience, I was like, I wonder how I can make an impact on the front end. So I began to um, research and I was just like, oh my gosh, um, nurse practitioner. So I looked in and I was just like, well, Lord, you know, is this something, is this the route that you want me to go? And um, he actually revealed that to me in a dream. 
um, prior to, um, he told me that he gave me three letters and it was GRE. I didn't know what GRE was. So I woke up that morning and I Googled it and it was a graduation, a graduate entrance exam. And I was like, okay, Lord, so this is something that you want me to pursue, obviously. Um, so I pursued uh, my degree in um, to be a nurse, family nurse practitioner. So when I, when I explained my journey, I went from not having a degree, being a nursing assistant, to a licensed practical nurse, to a registered nurse with an associate's degree, to obtaining my bachelor's degree. And then on top of that, I ended up going and getting my master's degree, which has allowed me to be a family nurse practitioner. Um, so since I've been a family nurse practitioner, I have- um, Can we stop? Been... I'm sorry. Before sure. we move on to the family nurse practitioner, uh, like this journey, it, uh, it it gives me just it know, inspires so me so much <laughs> because through it all like you've remained um faithful like obviously like you've leaned on god throughout this journey but the, the journey has been real yes. uh, getting to yes. that point and yes. just thinking back to the beginning when you had to quit to find a way to make just take care of yourself and yeah. getting all the way here and all the levels and the steps and the experience that you've had throughout this journey you're still going oh so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay did you I think it's the new normal for me <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I I pulled away from all of that, the the journey and your journey is different from other people's journey. Well, everyone's diff journey is different. And I like that because that's like what the podcast is about. Uh, this session is about that journey and how it can be different. And as long as you get there, yes. Um, yes. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter uh, how. Yes. It doesn't matter how. Yep. Yeah. It, it remaining dedicated, committed, and uh, per persistent through it. Yes. I'm still going because you're in oh, the yes. program. So yeah, I'm sorry. So so go ahead. Okay, so I think um, like you were saying about being persistent, I I feel like in 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 high school, um, we grew. I grew up in a small town, and we only had one traffic light one um fast food restaurant a couple mm -hmm. gas stations and I graduate my graduating class was no more than 70. so I think growing up in a small town you don't have um as many resources um you don't have uh, college prep or anything like that and especially if you come from a family who your parents um, didn't get, didn't attend or partially attended, but didn't graduate high school. So it's kind of limited. Um, so fast, I, I wanted to add on to that, um, but fast forward back to um, my nurse practitioner journey. Um, I commute an hour and 10 minutes one way to Marion, Alabama, and I care for patients um, ages three and above. Um, I provide preventative services. Um, I manage chronic conditions. And um, um, how long have you been a nurse practitioner? I'm sorry. It will be four years this coming August. And how long in the entire cycle of being a nurse? Since 2000, let me get it right since 2008 yes okay, since okay. 2008. just to add some context to this <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, since 2008 um yes yeah, so uh caring for patients in the underserved area i had the opportunity uh, when i was in nurse practitioner school i could not it was so hard for me to find preceptors to uh, take me under their wings and kind of, you know, 
um, trained me to, to be a nurse practitioner. So I had an opportunity to go to Selma, Alabama, where I was able to do two rotations. And, you know, caring for uh, the majority of our patients don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. And it was just so rewarding that, oh my gosh, you know, this is my calling. I just want to help, you know, and to give people hope that, you know, what society says that you have to have an insurance to get care, being in a place where you don't have to have insurance and you still get the, the health care that you need. Um, so proper health care. Yes. So um, I have, like I said, I've been serving um, for almost four years now and I love it and I would, would not trade my experience at all. Okay. So the difference between an um, a RN and I talked about LPN to an RN. So the difference in the RN to a family nurse practitioner uh, family nurse practitioners are able to manage and treat patients. Um, we have uh, we have to be under the supervision of a MD uh, or a physician um, to treat patients and manage patients and treat chronic conditions or diseases. So, so, uh, Go ahead. so I was going to ask, what's the difference? So, what's the the difference between a nurse practitioner and and, and the doctor? And I ask that question because when I go to the doctor now, I, I notice that it's a nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. It's rarely a, 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 a MD. Yeah. So I can say that um, healthcare is transit has transitioned to utilizing nurse practitioners. There is a shortage of doctors, and mm -hmm. nothing to take away um, from physicians um, that you know, physicians go to school for, I think, eight years and some extend beyond that to get their training um, with care and treating patients. As far as um, a nurse practitioner, they kind of go a total of six years to um, get uh, certified to be able to treat um, and the, the purpose of um, how some states, uh, Alabama is one of those states that you have to have a physician to supervise you um, in treating uh, patients with, um, you know, I think the benefit is uh, being able to collaborate and discuss uh, when you run into complex patients. Um, because, you know, the world right now that we're living in, there's the high, highest rate of hypertension and diabetes and uh, heart disease uh, going on right now. And we're dealing with um, so many chronic and complex conditions and symptoms um, that we do need uh, someone to collaborate with in caring for our, the populations that we serve. And, and nurse practitioners prescribe medicine too, right? Correct, we do. Okay. So, and, go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. Um, I was going to say too, and to even extend, some nurse, nurse practitioners um, are able to, through certification, um, pres prescribe prescriptive, um, well, controlled substances. Um, but in some states, uh, like I said, some states, uh, the requirements or the um, prescription is prescribing is different. Mm. Okay. So talk to us about your doctoral program that you're enrolled in. Yeah. So um, like I said, I'm enrolled in the University of Alabama at Birmingham, Doctorate of Nursing um, Practice Program. Um, it has been a journey. Um, I my um, plan is to graduate December of 2022 uh, with uh, my uh, subspecialty certificate in nursing education. Um, the purpose of the doctorate program is to not just utilize our experience, but also be able to uh, be a change agent in the healthcare, um, in healthcare systems, um, utilizing evidence-based practice what has already been um, proven and bringing it, you know, it, basically trying to improve um, the healthcare entities. Um, so I plan to 
um, utilize my doctorate into raising a community awareness um, and re by reducing structural barriers uh, through resources and education. A lot of one thing that I have found uh, with treating the underserved is the stigma. Oh my gosh, the stigma of going to the doctor. You know, people are so fearful with going to the doctor because of the things that have happened in the past. Um, you know, one of uh, the major things um, is the, uh, what's the project called? Um, that happened out of Tuskegee. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh gosh. They pretty it, much used the, uh, what did they use with the African-Americans? I know it was minorities. They yes, used, used like, the African-Americans yeah. and injected them with the syphilis, syphilis. virus. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I think things like that have kind of uh, created the stigma that, you know, don't go to the doctor because they're going to kill you or don't go to the doctor because they're not going to do anything but prescribe medicine. Don't go to the doctor because of whatever reason, because this happened to my family member. And I think with preventative medicine that it's like we can we can change that um, and be or more of an influence to impact people that, you know, these are the reasons why you need to get a checkup every year. These are the reasons why when you get a certain age, why you need to have this uh, colorectal screening, this uh, cervical cancer screening, this breast cancer screening, prostate, whatever type of screening it is, but just having someone to monitor your overall health and well-being. Um, so that's my plan to utilize uh, my doctorate to basically raise awareness. So with this doctorate, will you be able to, um, do you still have to be under the supervision of a doctor or an well, MD? It, it depends on in what, what area or what um, direction, uh, direction is better. What direction um, I choose to go. I haven't quite put everything together um, or I'll say God hasn't quite revealed the whole process to me on what it will look like. Um, I'm not sure if I'll remain treating patients or would I be more of a resource? I was gonna ask you, would it take you away from patients? Um... So that's, that's one thing that I have been waiting on direction for. Um, and he hasn't quite given it to me yet on what it would look like. Um, not, not to take away the experience. I feel that um, maybe I'll be able to do it in both ways because I also would like to teach um, future either nurse practitioners or registered nurses um, as well. So I'm excited and a little bit nervous, but I'm ready for um, the way that he's going to use me through this education. We're excited for you um, just listening to your journey. And I think your your purpose is uh, it has been clearly defined for you throughout your journey and you have followed. So I have no doubt that this will continue through your journey, that your purpose will continue to be revealed along the path and that you will continue to follow. Yes. Yes. So it's a um, quick six, right? Yeah. All right. So uh, we like to break it up and, and, and run to a part where we do a, a game called quick six where we ask you six questions and we want you to answer with the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. The first? Yeah. Um, juice or a soft drink? Uh, and I have to choose one. <laughs> what, what are you going to put in place? <laughs> uh, or water. You want me to put water in there? Yes, because, you know, since I nurse practitioner and I like to teach and educate <laughs> okay let, let, let's just let, can we use all three <laughs> okay, the reason, why okay. I say it, that, it. the reason why I say that is because I believe you know when my patients come and see me I I try to put myself in their shoes it is it hard for me to say or hard for me to do personally that uh, drink water, your 64 ounces of water a day. Yes, it is very hard. 
So I want to say that I I like all three, um, but are two better than one? Yes, I mean, the one is better than two. Yes, it is. But I just say, do it in moderation. You know, um, I, I like my orange, my juice. I like my pineapple juice, my orange juice, my cranberry juice, my apple juice. You know, I like them all. <laughs> but, and I also like my Dr. Peppers and my Mountain Dews, but it's only in moderation. Am I going to drink it? Do I want to drink it all day? No, I don't, because it's not going to do anything but make me sluggish. And, you know, if you have a family history of diabetes, you know, that kind of increases your rate and it causes obesity. But I just say do everything in moderation. Um, You know, it's hard to just kind of put uh, just one out there greater than the other and not be realistic. Okay, nurse. Well, um, <laughs> no, don't ask her. Water it is, everyone. Yes, Water yes. it is. So I, I like to work with you on where you are. Like I'm a down to earth person, and I know it's hard to get in those six to four ounces. Yes, it is. I want, I want some juice. I want, I want a cold out the pepper, You know. So um, I, I just say do it, do it all in moderation. That doesn't mean that you have to have three glasses of juice and six sodas a day. Um, what what I try to do is um, buy the miniature juices as well as the miniature Dr. Peppers because I, I love cold Dr. Peppers. Um, so I have, you know, made those uh, changes, you know, with, uh, it's kind of satisfying, um, you know, the, the things I like to drink, so. That's my okay. That's Water, my but in moderation. Okay. Yes. Next one you do, uh, indoors or outdoors? Indoors. I'm not an outdoors person. <laughs> I hate mosquitoes. Oh, wait. <laughs> but you need that vitamin D, though. <laughs> yes. Yes. I hate mosquitoes. Oh, yeah. Definitely indoor. Okay. But I do like to be outdoors some, but yeah, but I would choose indoor any day. Okay, sneakers <laughs> or sandals? Oh, so this has a story okay. to it. Okay, quick take, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> so this has a story to it. Now, I was definitely a sandals and high heels girl before I got married and started having children. Um, but after I had children, I definitely turned into a sneaker girl um because my feet changed after I had um children so can I do both does that happen I see a lot of nurses and doctors wearing tennis <laughs> shoes though is that and maybe because you know I have walked on concrete for all these years running up and down the hall to take care of patients um but I, I tell my children all the time that they they kind of made me flat foot and I wasn't oh. <laughs> <laughs> blame the children okay <laughs> Uh, burgers or tacos? Oh my God. So these questions are really hard to me because <laughs> I kind of like both <laughs> food. <laughs> you don't like one more than the other? No. Um, I like good burgers. It, well, you know what? I say, I don't say burger. I say burger on this one. Um, I, I love a, a good cheeseburger, no onions, uh, with all the other toppings. Yes. Let, Somebody let's make her one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So last one. Next to last one. Oh, next to last one. I'm sorry. Cruise or fly? Cruise or fly? Yeah. I think cruise. And the reason why is because if you above, if you're above, and above the clouds, you can miss out on the adventure that's below. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And not because um, you're scared if you pay attention. Huh? <laughs> not because you like me, you're scared of flying. <laughs> <laughs> Just because. So, I will tell you that I am scared of high, I'm afraid of heights. Um, and uh, look, if my husband's on here, he'll talk about me so bad, but I am afraid of heights, but, um, it's a difference with being in the air, but it's also a difference in um, riding and just seeing all the beauty um, that God has created. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, 
virtual, virtual or in person? Um, I think I like both. Oh my gosh. Uh, you, you, are you, uh, you probably after this, um, <laughs> this meeting, you'll probably say, Let, let's do it in between only because, um, I'm more of a hands-on person. Um, but then I also think out of the box that some people don't have the opportunity to, um, and I guess that this might be my spirituality side that, if you're in a room, you can you can reach uh, one or two or however many the room can hold. But virtually, you can reach people across the world. So yeah. I'm kind of I've kind of learned to become a out of the box person because our journey, our lives, and everything around us is so much bigger than ourselves. True. So True. can I be in between? No, no. Uh, I, I I think I like both. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, especially yeah. with the whole pandemic, uh, yes. learn to like value the virtual yes. world yes. in yes. different ways. How yes. has that been? Like, as far as like being a nurse practitioner, how has that has that changed your your world with the whole virtual thing? Do you see like a lot of more patients virtually? Or, or um, so in our area, in our in the area that we serve, um, there is a lack of um, um, access to. Uh, internet. So a lot of our patients were still coming in office. Um, and, you know, we we did not shut our doors like um, some primary care settings did um, for the simple fact that not everybody has access to, you know, internet, um, telephones, uh, or uh, what I'm trying to say, um, electronics. Um, so we continue to see patients, um, even though we dressed up and took precautions and tried to protect patients coming in the office as well as uh, our staff, um, we continue to see patients in clinic. Okay. So it, it, I can imagine like being in an underserved area, just as you've described, like coming into a, a, a doctor or a nurse who seems to care and have a, a deep down love for what they do. I'm sorry, I, I, I need to come in person yes. because yes. I'm not sure that virtual will give me yes. um, what I feel like I'm going to get when I come in um, because I, I think it takes a, a loving heart, a, a willingness, a dedication to, um, to serve as a nurse, a doctor or in the healthcare field in any capacity, it takes a, a deep down love and, and commitment. Um, so I, in that aspect, I would take an in-person visit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, and one thing that I, I do tell my patients is that it, on the first visit, uh, this is this is who I am. This is the way that that I am. Um, I know that you came here for one, but if I see something, you're going to get it all. Um, mm. If I see anything that, you know, could um, kind of lead up to, hey, you're heading in the wrong direction, you're at increased risk of this. I'm going to address it. And, um, you know, I just feel like that in-person um, visit, you you get so much more um, out of the yeah. visit. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree as well. So, um, you can do the last one? Go ahead. So, uh, what advice would you give a freshman nursing student that's beginning their journey? Being your whole journey, what advice would you give them at the beginning of their journey? At the beginning of the journey, I would say work hard and develop a strong support system. If you don't have a support system, lean on to whatever college that you're attending um, because they have things in place. Um, for me, I tried to do it all by myself. 
um, because I didn't, I didn't want to be a burden on anyone. And um, being, being a burden, feeling like being a burden, um, I think it has allowed me to learn from um, getting in financial debt based off, you know, with, with my education. Um, and there are resources out there, um, resources that it, I learned with just opening my mouth. Um, so is it easy? No, it's not. Nothing comes easy. But hard work pays off. So that that's that's one thing that I would um, I would just encourage um, freshmen. Yes. And that support system. Yeah. And it sounds like networking too. Yes. Yes. I, I I love the support system. Um, that's probably one of the best pieces of advice and not just for um, nurses or anyone going in the healthcare mm -hmm. field. I think in life, um, you need that support system as a foundation yeah, to yeah. be able to continue on your journey because it, it journeys are going to get hard, yes. um, challenging, yes. you're going to stumble and maybe fall a few times, but yes. having that support system to cheer you on, push you along the way yes. and do all those things necessary in that moment to get you um, where you need to be. I, I, I love the support system um, yes. part of that. Yes. Well, oh, that this has been um, more than amazing. We definitely appreciate um, you taking the time to to be with us and not just giving us your journey, but giving us what it is um, that a nurse practitioner is uh, LPN, um, uh, RN, the the health care aspect um, and, and what you do on a daily basis. So uh, people always, because we're military, people always say, thank you for your service. Let us say thank you for your service yes. and all the healthcare workers to keep us healthy um, because we know it's an investment for us, in, into us. What you give is an investment to people, their lives, their children. Um, so thank you. Yes, I appreciate that. Yes. And to all the to all the healthcare workers um, out there, um, I tell you, it, it it's not easy. It's not easy being a healthcare worker. Um, but I do believe that it's a calling. Um, it that is. we have to we have to stand up and serve when others are not. And I looked at I look at, you know, in the midst of the pandemic, um, all the essential workers like we were we were front line um so yes i um i would also like to thank all the healthcare workers um in all the service in every every way that you provide um no no position is greater than the other we yeah. all are there to um strive and and care for care for our our nation. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Well, um, thank you. Thank you again. Um, thank you for we, having me. Yes. And we definitely look to bring you back because it's as you finish your, um, your doctorates, we would like to have you back to check back in because I think there is more yes. there um, than we've been able to expand upon today. Yes. Um, so we we um, look forward to having you with us again. Yes, and I look forward to you reaching out to you all reaching out to, out again as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.